Thanks so much for registering. It's good to have you with us as always. We've got a number of things uh, lined up for you today. We'll cover that agenda here in just a moment. But uh, primarily today, uh, looking at smarter use of the design editor for emails. Also some tips for insight and also looking at one of the Eloqua sales tools, which is Engage and specifically how the sales team can access that through Outlook. So uh, let's uh, let you know who's on the call today. So my name is Derek Bell, the Customer Success and Marketing Director at Marketing Cube. And we also have Jason on the line as well. So Jason's helping with, um, with questions. So if you do have any questions, please use the chat function to shoot those questions through and uh, we'll get those answered. I'm, um, I, th I think I've got a little bit of a flu. So if you hear me going silent for a moment, I'm just grabbing my glass uh, for a glass of water. So uh, please bear with me. What's on our agenda today? So first of all, over the last few months, I've um, been sitting with a number of different customers and looking at their use of the email design editor. And while that's, the adoption has been fantastic, which is great, um, there's just a few tips that we wanted to give you in relation to building those emails that might save a little bit of time and also just enhance the overall look of those emails that you're building. So we'll, uh, we'll work through some of those for you today. Then we're going to move to Insight and just get a better understanding of the two users that you have available there. So you've got a, a reporter license and also an analyzer license. And so we'll explain what those two user uh, profiles are for Insight and the difference between the two. And does everybody need to have analyzer? The short answer is no, by the way, but uh, we'll get to those and explain those in a little bit more detail for you. Then we'll have a look at uh, Eloqua Engage and specifically look at the plugin for Microsoft Outlook and how that works. And so uh, you'll find quite a bit of information in the help center on that, but uh, we'll show you a little bit today and just give you a high level understanding as to how that works. And then as always, our fourth point will be understanding what's new, what's coming, and just a range of different enhancements. So uh, here we are at the end of February, and it was last weekend, last weekend that we had released 19A of Eloqua. So uh, we'll cover off some of those points and just make you aware of some of those enhancements that have arrived. But the first thing I wanted to do was respond to a couple of questions that we had submitted from uh, members of the, uh, the group. So we have um, how to segment a group of your most engaged clients based on email opens, clicks, etc., And then a more specific one in relation to insight. So the insight question I'll come back to, but first of all, I thought we could jump straight in and have a look at how to segment a group of your most engaged clients. The question relates to engagement and understanding a level of engagement of contacts. Now, the most obvious way to do this, of course, is to build out a lead score model. And so on your screen right now, you can see a lead score model that we've built, but specifically this particular model is what we call our customer engagement uh, model. So it's not really so much about being a lead, it's really looking at our customers so we build out a profile that would support all of the data that we have that tells Eloqua that a person is a customer. And then we focus very heavily on engagement and understanding that engagement. And so here I can, I can drill in and I can see uh, most highly engaged customers, et cetera. There's 56 of those at a, about 119 at an A2. Uh, and so the list goes down. So that's one way to do it is to use lead scoring to identify that audience. But the other way to do it is to use segments. And so for example, you'll see here, I've just typed in the word engage or engaged, uh, and you can see I've got a number of different segments over, over the years that have been built to answer that question. But there's one here I've got called engage customers past 90 days. So let's jump in and have a look at that one. I did a little refresh on this just a few moments ago. So we've got 358 customers uh, who are what we would call highly engaged. And then what we've done essentially is just insert some variables that we would consider engaged. The first thing for us is to identify that the person is in fact a customer. Now you'll have different data points within your system uh, to identify a customer versus a prospect versus potentially a business partner or a vendor, or there could be different variables that you have. So whatever the value is that you have that identifies them as a customer, that's the first thing you would want to do. And then we start to look at different types of engagement. And so here we're looking at contacts who have clicked on uh, any email uh, at least two times within the last three months. And then we're using the variable of or. So you can see we've got or and, so just or. 
So again, focusing on customer, have they opened any email at least in the last two times, sorry, at least two times in the last 90 days. Um, then we're looking at form behavior. And then the last one we're looking at is website behavior as well. So we're kind of covering all the key areas there of websites, form activity, opening emails, clicking on emails. And so by running that particular model, uh, I can then save and determine who my most highly engaged contacts are. Now, the great thing is you can keep filtering, right? So if I change this, maybe let's say three times and change that one to three times, go to forms, let's say twice, um, and maybe say three times, and then hit save. Let's see what happens to that number of 358. And we're down to 249. So as we start to increase the threshold for what engagement means, then we can use segments to help us identify that highly engaged group. So that's, uh, that's two ways, one being lead scoring that you could use to identify. That's probably the most obvious way to do it. Probably a little bit faster uh, would be to create a segment and then start to use some variables that make sense to you uh, and would help you identify the right audience. So I hope that answers your question. Okay, so yeah, read the insight question. We'll jump onto that one when we move into insight. So uh, let's keep going and we'll jump straight into tips for more effective use of the email design editor. So as I said, most of what we've seen over the last uh, say five or six months is generally really good adoption of the email editor. And I think most of you will agree, it's a much easier interface to use. Uh, hopefully the results you're getting are consistent and uh, you're having good fun with that. The nice thing is that uh, of course, it's everything's responsive out of the box. So you don't have to worry about anything like that. The key thing though, is just making sure we're actually using the interface to deliver the best possible outcome. And so there's a few tips that I wanted to share with you to give you an idea as to how you could best do that. So again, let's jump straight into Eloqua and have a closer look at that. So, uh, so here's an email that I prepared earlier. This is, um, this is the email many of you would have received in relation to registering for the user group today. And so there are a few key things here that I wanted to point out that might help you save a little bit of time. In this particular example, same concept, we have two columns. If, if I didn't have this section in play, and change that to white, there we go. When you go to mobile view, uh, things can look a little bit too condensed. And, uh, and sometimes you see here, it just kind of chops off. Now you can max out the padding, so you can use padding here to increase it. But if you wanted to put a little bit more spacing, sometimes the easiest way to do it is to drop in another section across the top. And that's exactly what we've done here. So we've taken a layout piece and dropped a layout piece, which is full width. And then what we've done is we've just dropped in a spacer section to give that little bit of extra space. And then just to make sure I get the right, uh, the right gray, which is that one. And that just gives you a little bit of extra spacing. So the other thing you want to constantly do as you build your emails is move from full view to mobile view. And that helps you make sure that things like buttons, that is if you if you want them to line up, they don't have to be full width. For instance, you can change those to fit to text to be something like that. This is just a template that we use uh, internally to build out some of our emails. So yeah, you can do whichever is the, the greatest preference from your point of view. But the other secret we've determined is making sure that when you access your padding over here on the left-hand side, that you're generally consistent as you go through the process. The more consistent you can be, and by consistent, I mean the same amount of padding on the left and the right-hand side. So the text here is, you can see 20 on either side, and then the button uh, that you can see above, uh, we've made that one slightly narrow at 15. So again, if we have a look at that in mobile view, scroll down, so you can see we've got it just sitting slightly like so. But in order to keep getting your balance right, you will need to be constantly really moving from full view to mobile view to make sure everything's lining up as, as you want it to. The other one seems to be buttons. If you look at the padding that you've got available there, there's a few ways you can play with that padding, but just keep adjusting it so you're happy with the gaps that you get. 
Now, in relation to images, what I have discovered is you need to, let me find a better example here. So if I replace this, for instance, so let's take, uh, we'll take uh, Dan from Oracle. So if I slide in Dan, now, of course, what I can do is click on the image here. You can see there's an auto fit option and I can increase the size. The challenge with doing that though, is it's the same old, it's no different to the previous editor. You really want to upload your images into Eloqua in the size that you want them to be. So if I leave him on auto fit though, and then we go to mobile, uh, you will see that there's obviously a discrepancy in the sizes. So what we've discovered is that if you look at putting things in, and this will depend also on the size of your email, is it 600 or 750, et cetera. But if you want that image to look as nice as it does in mobile view, as well as full view, then you need to be consistent and you need to think about the size. So we found that working with images around 500 by 500 pixels works well when you drop them into columns and then they look much, much better from a overall point of view. Let's have a look again. So if I replace that again, uh, let's drop in the nice lady here. Um, if I replace that one and maybe some, uh, my steak from a uh, restaurant in New Zealand that works. So again, if I go to mobile view and you can see everything works nicely. So whether I'm in mobile or whether I'm in full, uh, it works well and is balanced. So just have a think about that as you, as you build out your emails and it becomes important to think about your naming convention. The nice thing is in the new editor, of course, that you can see the pixel dimension right here in the editor, you don't need to go into the image library uh, in order to identify the size of various images, but still including that information makes it much easier. You saw then uh, when I clicked on a relevant image and did replace, I knew the size image I needed. So I simply typed in 500 by 500 and you can see we've got quite a library there of images um, that would fit within that particular profile. So that's one tip to, uh, to help you in relation to that. So the secret there generally, when you've got the two columns, is just to add a small spacer section, full width, top and bottom, uh, which just evens things out and makes it look a bit more neat uh, as you work through that process. Now, once your email is live, you do have the option to view it in a number of ways. Through reporting, so often dashboards, uh, you can look at very specific emails. If I grab that one, for instance, and copy that, if we then head off to the dashboard area and we can look at an individual email and view the performance of that email in relation to click throughs, et cetera. Now, some of that information was previously available within the email editor itself. Uh, however, that information has moved to dashboards. So if I drop it in there and hit search, uh, we can then have a look at that one email and get more of that detailed view that you probably would be interested in. Uh, in trying to understand the overall performance of that particular email. So while that's loading, I'll come back to that in just a second. Now you may have noticed with the update in February, so last week, there's been a couple of slight cosmetic changes. Uh, you've now got these plus icons that help you add different columns. So even if you were to drop in, uh, say a two column section, um, you can use the plus icon to turn that into three. And of course you can use the, the arrows here to move things about. So uh, it just gives a little bit more flexibility as you're moving around and navigating with the system. Okay, so I've just got a question here from Steve. Steve has asked, what recommended width do you use for emails? They currently use 600. Yeah, you might notice uh, on the screen here, it might be a bit hard to tell, but we've actually elected to go with 756 width. Now let me explain to you why we've arrived at that decision. So the first thing is we did a careful analysis in Eloqua of really who, not who, but which device people were opening our emails on. And a marketing cube, we're largely a B2B player. And, uh, and so our customers, like you guys, are really sitting at your offices, generally either on a laptop or on a desktop with a, with a large external monitor. So from that point of view, there's a lot of screen real estate that's left. When you look in Outlook or you look in Gmail, if I have a 600 wide email, there's quite a bit of space on either side. 
So we figured, why not take advantage of that real estate? And so we've decided to move to 756 pixels as our default for building of emails. And of course, the, there's no real downside to doing that because all of the emails we produce are responsive. So if viewed on a mobile, it really doesn't make any difference. So that's why we, uh, Marketing Cube, have elected to run with the 756 wide. I, I personally can't think of why I would want to go to 900 or 1080 pixels, but again, it all depends on you, your customer base, and, and, and the experience you're trying to deliver. But it's also good to do a little bit of analysis uh, through your dashboards. So let me just go back to that dashboard. And so here we can see the individual performance of that particular email and the various groups that it went to, the link activity as well, uh, you can see there. Most people uh, click through to obviously register. A few people went off to have a look at the replay. Uh, a couple of people went to our blog. And I think that's the .ics file, so it's the calendar. Uh, invite, for instance, that was added there. And then the last one uh, you can see is the click map. Now the click map is really interesting because it starts to give you an idea as to how people are actually engaging with your content. Some of you might've noticed we, well, let me suggest that 81% of you noticed we have the register now button here, and then 10% of you noticed that it's also down here. So we, uh, we decided to do that uh, for a couple of reasons. One is that we figured there's a group of people in the user group community who get these emails each month. They know exactly what they are. They get there and they hit register and they're ready to go. But there are new users uh, who maybe have not attended previously uh, who might want to read through all of that information. And so we want to make sure that the call to action uh, is down towards the bottom of that email as well. And then you can see below. This one I find interesting. No one ever clicks on those social links. I'd love to know if you have a different... Uh, different outcome in your world, but no one ever seems to click on those. But, um, but they do click on other things. So this is the link off to our blog, uh, et cetera. So uh, the click-through map can be really very helpful in helping you understand what's going on. Okay, so Steve, yeah, that one's really just all about you probably looking at your own user community. And let me show you where I found that. It's open email by device. So on the open email by device mm -hmm. dashboard, it just gives you a little bit of a feel. Uh, and you get a similar result, obviously, if you're looking at uh, Google Analytics, um, you can look through there and get a bit more information uh, as to what people are doing. But for instance, if I remove, oh, this is a question some people have asked, what is other? So this is email open by device platform. If I remove mobile, tablet, and desktop, there's this other obscure one called other. So what is other? So I've been told other can be smart TVs. Uh, there are so many devices these days that people can access information on besides mobile tablets and desktops. So, um, so yeah, smart TVs is one. Now that's a freakish spike there of 117. So I don't know who or what that was, but, um, but you can see then you can sort of compare the information. So if I get rid of other and just focus say on desktop and mobile, you can see in our world that the mobile access is very minimal uh, when you compare it with desktop information or desktop viewers. So it was looking at this information, this data, that helped us determine that I think 756 wide is perfectly okay. So uh, hopefully that information is helpful to you. Now, one thing that I've noticed, uh, I found a little bit annoying and I'm not sure, there must be a fix coming, but uh, for instance, if you, now I need to find some copy somewhere. But if you take, let me grab some copy from here. Okay, and then we go up here and you say you wanna add some information at the end and you say paste a match destination and then you paste it. And of course in this example it works, but I imagine some of you have had experiences where that doesn't always work. What I've found is the best solution uh, is generally to, if you're gonna drop copy into it and you want to maintain the styling, try and paste what you're doing in between the existing copy. That way it will maintain the styling for you. We'll be heading over to Las Vegas for the Oracle event in March, uh, about this time next month. And we'll get to meet with the product guys. And this is one little question that I will certainly ask them uh, in relation to is, is that getting cleaned up? But um, if you're having that same sort of problem, uh, I found that a, a quick solution to, uh, to help. So again, just paste 
uh, your copy into an existing sentence uh, where you've got the styling already in place and that will save you a little bit of time. Okay, we have a question here from Steve. Okay, Steve. So Steve wants to go back to the email analysis report. On the email dashboard, is there open by time of day instead of click by time of day? Not that I'm aware of, Steve, no. Um, what is coming though is send time optimization. And send time optimization will largely be driven by when people open uh, emails. So it'd be interesting to understand what other benefits might roll out from that particular function. We may see more of that potentially on some of those dashboards. So um, let me take that question away and uh, see if we can get a bit more information on that. We're hoping that the send time optimization function uh, will be announced in more detail at the Las Vegas event next month. So uh, fingers crossed on that one, uh, but we'll certainly keep you posted on that one. In relation to logos and those sorts of things, there are several ways you can do it. What we've elected to do is all of our emails now will carry this red banner with the Marketing Cube logo on the left-hand side. And so what we've done there is we've actually created that as a single piece, uh, a single JPEG. So that's not an individual logo dropped in with a red background. Uh, it's just simply uh, a single JPEG, which is that 756 width. And so you can see how that then behaves when you go to, to mobile view. I found that just a little bit easier sometimes to work with. Um, instead of inserting the logo specifically, if you want to sort of maintain size and things and work with that, it, it's up to you at the end of the day. But that's just something that we found to be just a little bit easier to play with. Uh, as we build out the various emails. The other thing is to look at defaults. So remember over here on the left-hand side that you've got text defaults. So the secret here is to try and use templates. So if I go to Marketing Cube's um, template library, you can see here we have a whole range of different templates for different things. Uh, user group invitation, for instance, I hit choose. And so those defaults are actually hardwired into the template. So that when I come through and I have a look here, you can see they're already set. So it's our font that we want to use, it's the color, uh, the primary color that we want to use within the body copy, etc., and also any hyperlink defaults as well. So it's much easier to do that versus the user having to start from scratch every time uh, and then add that information as they go along. So again, accessing information or accessing new emails from a template chooser is a much smarter way to do that. Now, if you've created some templates, but perhaps haven't set those defaults, you can of course go into manage templates. And so if you come into the manage templates area, you can then make changes, set those defaults, and then moving forward, your users won't have to worry about those types of things. So you can see that information is hardwired in here at the template level. Remember, you're always looking at templates when you see the word standard up here in the top left-hand corner as well. Are there any other particular tips um, or questions that you might have in relation to the, to the email editor? Danny, how do I separate groups? How do I separate a group, the various queries? Oh, with brackets, sure. Let's just go back there to segments for you, Danny, won't be a sec. Okay, so this becomes your boolean search logic essentially so in our world i might do something like account type equals customer uh, and they're in state uh, let's say they're in uh, queensland and then i want to know perhaps from an account field point of view are they in which industry and so I might say, let's say financial services. Okay, so I might want to change my logic here and I want to group these two. So I click on the first one and holding my shift key on my keyboard, then I click on the second one. And when I do that, you might have noticed now at the bottom of the screen, the word group appears. And so when you do group, it then puts these brackets in place. The reason you would do that typically is because you want to change the logic here. Uh, to be something else and it might say and or and you're looking for different industries excuse me and let's say that one so it could be and or or so if I hit save and do a refresh 
Okay, so three people that meet that criteria. Now, if I was to change that to an or, so now it's going to be any customers in Queensland or any contacts in the entire database from financial insurance services or professional scientific and technical services. I imagine now that number will probably increase dramatically. It's like watching paint dry, isn't it really? Okay, so it's jumped up to 795. And so that's all because we've just changed the logic in the way that we've done that. So of course I could play with this and maybe change that to prospect, then hit save, maybe change that back to an and. So now what I'm doing is I'm looking for prospects in Queensland and they're in one industry or they're in another industry. And so that number now has changed to 134. So you can see Danny that by playing with those various filters um, and then also by grouping them in different ways, it really impacts the logic of the search or the query that you're doing. So hopefully that answers your question. Okay, are there any other questions in relation to the email editor? And just looking at a few tips there uh, to help you with that. If not, I'll just show you one more thing and then we'll uh, move on to our next topic. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm gonna start from a, uh, from a blank email. That is, this is not styled or templated in any way. Just to point out again a couple of things that, that I certainly missed when I first started playing with it um, that you may also have missed. So the first thing is the email is broken into two areas. You've got the content, which is highlighted in blue that you can see on the screen right now. And if you move slightly out to the left or the right, um, you'll then have the orange area, which is actually the layout piece. So this becomes helpful when you do something like if you decide you want to drag content over and you simply drop it in, it does like so. So it becomes a piece of that same layout. So here you have the layout and the content in place. So this becomes particularly important when you're playing with columns. So for example, if I then drag in some content or, sorry, let me rephrase, drop in some images, like so, because this is the one people find a real problem with from a stacking point of view. Um, okay, we'll drop in some of our rock star guests. Actually, as a time saver, I should have done this. As a time saver, I find it often easier, depending on what you're loading, to load in one image and then simply drag it into the next one like so. So bear with, oops, sorry, I duplicated. Trash, trash, duplicate, like so. And so what, what I'm seeing the mistake people are making is they're then dragging in, say, another, another layout area, and then they're dropping in some copy. And paste. All right, so if I now duplicate that, it's all looking fine here when we look at it in regular um, full view, but look what happens when I go to mobile view. So in mobile view, I now have three images and then my three paragraphs of text, which is I'm sure not what you had wanted. So what you need to do, you'll notice when you click on the left-hand side, that there are two layout sections. One layout section has the images, and the other layout section has the copy. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that the copy is dropped into the layout section directly below the image. You can see the highlight there when I drop that in, and like so. So if I now get rid of that layout section now, when I, sorry, when I go to mobile view, now you'll get probably what it is you're, what you're trying to get, which is an image with some copy, image, copy, image, copy. So that's just one example of one tip that might help hopefully save you some time and give you a better result. And then obviously the same logic applies if you wanted to put buttons uh, in as well and make sure the buttons are connected. When people view it on a mobile device, then the button is in context with the image above. Like so, so that one will uh, hopefully save you some time. It's just, that's just a, a mistake I've seen a few people make. Okay, so before we move on, we're gonna move on to insight reporting. Are there any questions in relation to the email editor at all? 
You're welcome, Danny. Thank you for that. Okay, so insight. Insight, as I've said there, is really about accessing your own big data. It's really about trying to drill a little bit further uh, into overall campaign performance, email performance, and contact behavior um, in understanding what people are doing. And um, the key thing to understand about insight is that it essentially provides you with a way to focus on behavior, and that is positive behavior. So insight is very much about what people have done, not what they haven't done. So whereas in segmentation within Eloqua, you can identify people who have opened emails and those who have not opened emails, insight is very much about what people have done, not what they haven't done. So if you're looking for people that haven't done certain things, then you would need to sort of go back into segmentation and use segment to really help you understand that in more detail. Just so everyone's clear and on the same page, Insight is a separate application to Eloqua, but obviously connected to Eloqua. It's the Oracle Business Intelligence Enterprise Edition, or Oracle, or they call it OBIEE, -E, and it basically is a, a, a big tool that really helps marketers dig into data and get more out of it. The key thing that we wanted to try and get across to you today was to understand that there are two types of users uh, within Insight and they are the reporter user and the analyzer user. So the reporter user, every Eloqua, uh, every Eloqua user, when you create their account, you can assign them a reporter user, which will give them access to Insight, which enables them to do a range of things, but not absolutely everything. So what's the difference? So the analyzer user, typically the profile of this sort of person would probably be a business analyst. And I like to very affectionately refer to them as probably being a bit of a data geek. There's someone who can understand data and visualize data and manipulate it in such a way to produce all sorts of different types of reports, whether they be reports uh, in a table format or even potentially dashboards. Beyond the dashboards that you have access to in Eloqua, there's an additional dashboard function available within Insight as well. So you've got, uh, you've got some options there to play with. Some of you may, just, may have noticed um, towards the end of last year, Eloqua made an announcement that the Analyzer license, uh, which used to cost, uh, it was around 10,000 US dollars per user per year, uh, was now actually being made freely available. The process now essentially is that your Eloqua administrator can assign an Analyzer user license to any user within the platform. Now, you may think, well, everybody should have access to everything. Uh, not necessarily the case. For instance, my life would be very happy if I only had access to Reporter, and I'd really be able to do 98% of everything that I think I need to do uh, as a Reporter user. The analyzer user is the person who will actually manipulate the reports and really tailor them based on potentially individual business case needs within, within your organization. So depending if your company has a user community within Eloqua of 15 or 20 people, or even 100 people or more, not everybody is going to have the time to really be going into, into Insight to manipulate and build reports. It would be likely that you would have a business analyst who would have a very uh, targeted skill set that understands um, these types of platforms, uh, and is it then able to dig around and create the reports that you want to build. So let's jump in and have a look. And uh, what I wanted to do is show you how you can go about actually extracting uh, one of the more common reports from Eloqua, which is a campaign analysis overview report. The, my login that I'm using right now is the analyzer user interface. So I'm going to zoom that screen in just a little bit, make it a bit easier for you. Uh, to see what I'm doing. So <clears throat> first thing I would do is determine the type of report that I want to get. So let me explain how that works. If I go into the campaign uh, report area of Insight, what I'll get is a roll up of all engagement within that campaign. So I, when I look at unique open rates, for instance, I might have 25 emails sitting in that particular campaign canvas but uh, I will see a roll up of that data to a single line item. If I want to see a complete breakdown of all of those 25 emails in a particular campaign, that would mean I would need to go over here and look at the email reporting area of Eloqua, okay? 
So it's important to understand sort of which direction to go. Um, so let's jump into campaigns. And once I get into the campaign interface, we see a whole range of options begin to appear. So these are all the, uh, the pre-built reports that you have available from a campaign point of view. The most common one is this one right here, which is the campaign analysis overview report. So we can see uh, there's an option here to click open. So I click on open. And then the first thing I need to do is identify, while I fill my glass with more water, um, is identify the time frame that I want to do. So um, for those of you that are familiar with Insight previously, you had the option to choose these defaults, uh, which many, many customers loved. Uh, they weren't initially available in the new Insight, but they've been added, I think, uh, one or two releases ago. So I can choose last 30 days. Now, if I wanted to, I could come in here and select one specific campaign or multiple campaigns, or I can click on the more search option here at the bottom. I find this easier by clicking on the more search option. It just makes it a little bit easier to find what I want. And uh, the other nice thing is that uh, your naming convention will make life a lot easier. So if I click on anything that starts with 2019, I can see everything right there. So the naming convention makes life a lot easier. Um, let's choose 0226, 2019, 0226, and hit search. There we go. So that's the user group for this month. And there are two campaigns there. So I can either move one of those over to the left. Or if I hit the double arrow in the center, everything on the left will move over to the right. Then I say, okay. This option here can be helpful, especially for some of you guys where you're in much larger organizations where you have lots of users. You may want to come in here and actually identify yourself and only look at campaigns that you've created. Okay? So keeping in mind the last 30 days, I just want to make, yeah. So if I click on OK, I don't need to worry about choosing myself because I know I created those campaigns. So it's not a filter I need to apply. So here I am. So you've got lots of information sitting here essentially. What I wanted to do as well, I've got another instance of Eloqua open over here. And this one is a little bit different because it's a reporter user. So I'm just gonna repeat that process, campaign analysis overview, uh, last 30 days. I just wanna show you the difference um, in the interface. And you'll see the interface, there's not a lot of difference, but it will be just one minute. Move those over, say okay, and okay. All right, let me just get these lined up for you side by side. Okay. Now, you'll notice, um, so that just to clarify, the screen on the right-hand side is the reporter user, and the screen on the left-hand side is the analyzer user. Now, you'll notice at the bottom, this is really where the difference is. So from a reporter user, I can refresh the report, I can print it, I can export it, or I can copy it. Over here on the left-hand side, you'll see there's a lot of other options. Largely, it's the edit option that becomes of greater interest, really. So for instance, if you wanted to build a campaign analysis report for your organization that was more specific and perhaps excluded some of these columns, you'll see there's lots of information here, um, and you may feel that all of that information is maybe not relevant. So what you can do is edit the report. And so as an analyzer user, when I click on edit, It opens and now I can start to adjust columns. So I can move columns around if I want to, I can delete columns if I want to, um, I can adjust filters. And then essentially once I'm done there, the key to this whole process, this is what seemed to take me forever to figure out, but I finally figured it out. As the analyzer user, I want to choose save as up here in the left-hand corner, not save. If you hit save, you'll constantly get error message, error messages because what you're really trying to do is make changes to the master report 
that Eloqua calls campaign analysis overview. So the secret to the analyzer user is once you make the changes to your report, remove the columns or add additional metrics and attributes, you'll see there's loads more over here on the left hand side that you can play with. Um, you want to choose save as. And then when you do save as, you can drop it into your company shared folder. And so then once you drop it into your company shared folder, down here on the left hand side, that means that our good friends who are the reporter users will be able to come in and have a look and uh, access those reports. So that, that's essentially one of the more obvious differences between the analyzer user and the, uh, sorry, the analyzer user and the reporter user. Does anybody have any questions on that at all? I would encourage you to definitely go to, um, to the help center. You can also go to marketingcube.com.au forward slash insight. And we've put together a splash page that essentially will take you off to a whole range of uh, resources to help you with insight. There's some information there. You'll see we've given you the breakdown of a reporter and analyzer user, understanding that. There's also direct links from here straight into the help center to the, to the insight area. Uh, also top liners information. There's also six videos here. And I'd really encourage you that if insight is something that you want to do and really understand, I'd really encourage you, you could probably invest half an hour and you'd be done in watching all of those videos. They would take you no more than half an hour to get through them. Um, tremendous resources. For the more geeky amongst us, um, these, will, uh, these links will help you because they help you understand the relationship of all the various attributes that make up different reports within Insight. So go ahead and visit that page. We'll include this link for you in the next month's email as well so you can get to it. But it's just our URL, marketingcube.com.au forward slash insight. Uh, and you can access more information there as well. All right, so Oracle Eloqua sales tools from Microsoft Outlook. Let's quickly run through this one. So what are sales tools? Sales tools are separate applications to the Eloqua platform that have been specifically built for the salesperson. And there's largely there's two of them, and those two are Profiler and Engage. And the other two that you see below basically help the salesperson access that information through Chrome, if they're using Chrome, or through Microsoft Outlook. So they just basically enhance that experience essentially. So Engage really, they, the key thing is that, as it says right there, it alleviates the need to constantly recreate emails that are frequently used throughout the sales process. So if the sales team have fairly standard emails, they meet with somebody, they wanna send a thank you email, thanks for the meeting, then those emails can be produced, but the engaged user can personalize them themselves. So they can pull down a template, which is all approved by marketing, but then they can you know, add something to the first paragraph saying, you know, hi Mary, it was great, thanks for the coffee, uh, great meeting you, I've added some information below that I think you'll find helpful. And that can be then all pre-populated with the relevant links to go off to the particular product or service that the meeting was about. So it's really about saving time uh, and delivering you know, beautiful on-brand uh, messages. Now the salesperson can access Profiler from a range of locations from their tablet or from their mobile phone. So they've got flexibility with how they access Engage. But specifically today, we wanted to make you aware of the interface and the, the process of going through to get Outlook and Engage talking together. And so essentially the Engage app needs to be added to your instance of Eloqua, which takes about 33 seconds to do. It's not really that hard. Um, there's a degree of configuration. Uh, and again, I could do it. So if I can do it, you could do it. There's certainly some tips and tricks along the way. And if you want to go through this process, we'd be happy to sit down with you and just sort of look at some of those. But essentially, you, you've got two solutions that work really well hand in hand. So Engage is the platform that enables the salesperson to access a range of templates to send outbound emails to people. And then Profiler is the way for them to actually view the engagement with those emails that they're sending. There is the ability from an admin point of view to limit the number of emails that a salesperson can send. So for instance, you don't want to particularly have the salesperson access a template and then send it to three and a half thousand contacts. So you can limit the number of people that a single salesperson can send a single email to at any one time. 
So that uh, might be something to consider. But yeah, there's a range of little tips and tricks like that that we can help you navigate if you want to explore, engage in a little bit more detail. But essentially, how does it work? Well, really, there's two pieces to the puzzle. Um, the first is that they have engaged. And the second is that they need to have the, the sales tool plugin for Outlook. And then essentially, basically, you as the marketing team will build the emails just as you do build emails today. But you'll assign them to a specific email group. And obviously, well, not obviously, but the logical, logical name for that email group would be Engage, for instance. So then sales can then access those templates through the Engage platform or via Engage in Microsoft Outlook, as you saw. So it means they don't need to leave Outlook in order to access the templates. Then sales can use Profiler to track engagement. If there are any updates needed to templates or potentially there might have been emails that were sales specific around a, a promotion, if they need to be removed, they can be removed so they're no longer available uh, to the sales user. But the key thing is that all of those emails that are sent by the sales team are essentially treated as though they were part of an Eloqua campaign. So while the salesperson is sending one email to one person, they're able to get all of the tracking and all of the reporting that you would get as a marketing team if you were emailing 85,000 people. So it really is a really valuable tool. It certainly saves time uh, between sales and marketing and marketing and not building bespoke one-off emails. Um, they can give sales the tools they need in order to build out those, uh, those campaigns themselves, or not campaigns, but individual communications. Oops, sorry, just went a little bit too far there. The last thing I wanted to show you there was just to understand that um, the, the word free doesn't come up very often, right? But in, when it comes to licensing for these products, depending on the edition of Eloqua you have, whether it's basic, standard, or enterprise, you do receive from Oracle some free licenses. I mean, it's very clever, I think, because once you give these to the sales team, generally speaking, I think you're going to find they're going to love it. So you can see there that you've got 5, 10, or 20 uh, free licenses that can be used. So uh, we can, there's reports you can pull in the back of Eloqua under licensing that will show you if they're already being used. But as an Eloqua user, you don't need a license for these things. Uh, we'll send it off your profiler because you access it anyway through, through Eloqua. There's plenty of information in the Help Center as well. So much of the information that I've shared with you today is in the Help Center. You'll find information in there on how to install it, how to find it, et cetera, et cetera. But if you do have any questions, please reach out to us. Uh, happy to go through that with you. Okay, so what's new and what's coming? So many of you will have noticed the new responsive form editor. Have you started playing with it yet? I started playing with it. Until 19B, the only real limitation uh, is there's no progressive profiling just yet. So progressive profiling, I understand, will come in 19B, which will be what? So by May. <coughs> Excuse me, guys, I apologize. That one's self-explanatory. I'll leave you with that one. This one you need to be aware of. If you're still building emails in the old editor and also the old uh, landing page editor and eventually the old email editor, we're going to have to start thinking about migrating, <coughs> excuse me, migrating uh, to the new design, <coughs> design editors. We'll get some more information to you uh, around these deadlines. <clears throat> but please keep an eye out for information from Eligor as well. Sounds atrocious. Uh, another enhancement, which is good. I know many of you are using the LinkedIn uh, matched audience function and the lead gen form. You can now capture leads consent from forms and pass that as well. So if you're using uh, the LinkedIn form, that's a great enhancement. Then there may be, I know there's a couple of clients that are also using some of the WeChat uh, integration. Now, all of this detail is available in top liners um, if you wanted to dig into this a little bit further. Um, but essentially, I've just tried to capture some of the highlights, those changes, uh, to give you a better idea as to how they work and what they do. So if you're using WeChat, there's certainly a few enhancements there that would be worth while you're exploring in a little bit more detail. That brings us to the end of the session. There's been a few Q&A in amongst that. Um, I didn't get a chance to go in detail um, into that additional insight question. But essentially, the, the question related to, let me just take you back there quickly. The question specifically focuses on 
how can I view all segment members? So the emphasis is on looking at people in a campaign and include engagement info and columns. So who opened, clicked, visited landing pages. Now in relation to who, that's the caveat that is, that would become multiple reports. Now we can certainly look at campaigns and you can look at information around open, clicked, and landing page visits. They would be represented in a single report at the campaign level as numbers, but those numbers would be highlighted, which would then enable you to drill through to see the individuals that make up those various areas. So looking at email behavior, landing page behavior, uh, and I suppose you'd probably add form behavior uh, there as well. So in relation to building that into a single report to look at, I'm not sure that would be possible. I would need to check with our developers to understand if that would be possible. But the way that would work today is that would, they would be presented in columns uh, with numbers and percentages, and then you would click through from that number to then discover who makes up that information. But keeping in mind, depending on what it is you want to do with that report, that you could probably get that information very easily and very quickly from segments. Not all segments end up on a canvas necessarily. I mean, there are many segments I create that I kind of use for quasi reporting. Not that I would ever encourage you to see segment as a reporting tool, um, but if you're really trying to drill down to the who uh, in a single location, that may be a faster way to go about doing that. But I will follow up with uh, our developers to see if there's anything there uh, that might be a little bit different. <laughs> Thanks, Steve, I appreciate the encouragement. Yeah, I tried to mute you there to uh, guard you from most of the, the worst part of that coughing fit. Thanks very much, everybody, for attending today. Uh, thanks for those that submitted questions. We appreciate that. And uh, we look forward to seeing you all next month at some point. Take care. Have a great week, everybody.